Coming to you from the campus of IUPUI, your destination for all your music and entertainment needs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tuning In with your host, David Rowan, sponsored by the Campus Citizen. Welcome everyone to another episode of Tuning In with your host, David Rowan. Today, I have with me IUPUI's very own Trevor Potts. <laughs> Mr. Potts, thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks very much. So, uh, tell me a little bit about, you, how long have you been a professor for IUPUI? Oh, uh, maybe 12, 13 years. I'm not exactly sure. So, how yeah. were you, how did you get, how did you commute uh, here to being a professor? Like, how did you... <clears throat> you know, I grew up in New York City and then... Uh, Born in New York City and then moved out to Indianapolis. My formative years were here, and I came back when I was offered a job here at the Department of Communication Studies. But what really drew me in was the uh, Director of Civic Engagement opportunity to set things up with community partners and work really closely with that. So, so you have a, a wide background of communications. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've worked in politics. I've worked in radio. I've worked in... Uh, um, nonprofit sector as well, and I have been teaching for about uh, shoot about twenty years on this, you know, doing other things at the same time. So, what classes are you teaching this semester? Uh, media and society are my bread and butters. Um, media and contemporary society M one fifty. I also teach uh, com theory and uh, G one hundred communication studies and. Trying to work on a legal communication class for next year, which I really enjoy having people debate First Amendment issues. Okay, so what made you decide to teach communications itself? Just because of your vast knowledge, your background and experience? Uh, no, I, I, I love it, actually. I think, it's, I think it's a really important discipline. I think that, like journalism and uh, uh, sociology, I think they're all very, very good and very useful. Um, yeah, my background, for sure. You know, working, working in... A, uh, communication director in nonprofits, radio, a little bit of television, uh, just kind of steered me in that direction. But I love, you know, the critical analysis of media texts is what I re really jazzes me up. Okay, so you enjoy you enjoy teaching as much. Love it. Yeah, it's totally freeing and wonderful. So students uh, inform me that you yourself are a musician. I am. Yeah. So you had a musical background experience I, with that? I try not to advertise it too heavily, but somehow you, <laughs> somehow you found out. Uh, do I have a musical background? I've always been singing. I've always been singing and humming and writing music. Um, started as a drummer, but um, most of the bands that I've been in, I'm, I'm the, the vocalist and songwriter, at least the, the vocal part of it. So how did, how did you grow up in music? How did music approach you? How did it find you? <clears throat> I've always been doing it. Um, you know, I, honestly, my, th my grandfather was always whistling. And uh, ever since then, ever, uh, some of my students, one that I'm going to see here in a little few minutes, uh, Jason always compliments or comments that uh, I'm always singing something or whistling something, oftentimes a song that hasn't been created yet. So it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I could not do it, to be honest. Um, thankfully, I don't play all the instruments. And so, you know, I rely on some really uh, strong talents in the city. And, uh, you know, they make me. Um, I couldn't do anything without them. So. Okay. So any particular favorite mu uh, instruments that you had to play? For instance, you know, being a lead vocalist. Myself playing? I play, yes. I play drums, percussion, <clears throat> a little bit of keyboards. Um, couldn't figure out the guitar in five minutes, so it must be impossible. <laughs> no, so, actually, over the, over the holidays this year, over the winter, that's that's my wife and I are going to try to try to learn a little bit of bass guitar. But, um, yeah, thankfully, again, I've just had, you know, found the right people to... To do the to make the sound full, and uh, I'm more of a front man, I guess, than anything else. Okay. Um, have you ever had you know, your first group um, musical group? Have you performed solo, such as uh, certain events or anything? Like, yeah. How did? Um, no, always in bands. Always in bands. Um, since high school, all the way through. Uh, so you know, here in Indianapolis, then uh, some big bands in Dayton, Ohio, and then. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and then Illinois, and then back here. A little time in uh, Richmond, Virginia also. But um, not bands, bands for the most part. Um, one of the things we've got going on right now actually is not a band per se, but it's, it's, it's more of a project, which is nice. Uh, it's a computer, this, uh, yeah. So a lot of it's electronic, industrial. Um, that's not a normal band, but that's kind of fun too. So that's, I wouldn't say that's a band, but we are writing all of our own music, and it's quite fulfilling actually. And I've mentioned to you that that's, 
That's a nice, again, the main bands are Sugar Moon Rabbit and Papa Worfley's Funk Revival. Um, but the third project is uh, Scarecrow Jesus. We were performing a full set of Doors songs at Radio Radio last year, and the uh, one guy, the gentleman who is the that Scarecrow Jesus band, heard me and said, you know what, I'd really, I'm working on this project, I'd really like you to come in and be the voice, and so that's how that happened. For the Scarecrow Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which well, is which is a hyper political uh, electronic industrial band along the lines of Nine Inch Nails and Ministry. Well, yeah. I mean, I've I've never act, I haven't uh, quite I'm I'm not particular um, informed on the type of sound yeah. when it comes to yeah. hyper political. <laughs> right. And it's, I mean, it could be a little bit it's of a, a mouthful. It's its but, own genre. Yeah. Okay. So, what kind of well, for I guess for speaking of Scarecrow Jesus, yeah. we can start off with this being an, an experimental project. Yeah. What kind of message would you like to bring? You know, send out to your you know, audience. Uh, honestly, I, I think I do it with uh, some of my my, my music. Um, sometimes it's just you know something organic, you know, wonderful feelings and uh, uh, and so forth. But this one is overtly political, and so um, whether the target is hypocrisy and politics or um, or the role of the media itself. I mean, a lot of it. That song that I sent you, um, I think, is looking at that. So we try to we try to fuse things. I use a lot of literary references. That's actually a, a reference to I, I claim them all as the song. It's a, a reference to Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, um, and just how you know the role of the media in giving people empty, vapid information oftentimes. So every song has a different target, I think, for that for that project, which is great. I love it. And uh, um, I think that politics um, is necessary in music. Um, you yeah. know, not everything has to be that, but I, I, I seek out things like that, whether it's anything from Logic Today to uh, um, Bob Dylan back in the, back in the days. Um, I think that, that that's, that's what one of the functions of music, and that's the one that I'm drawn to. I know you can't. I know everyone can't please everyone with politics, you sure, know, sure. these days. So, could do you think your music, particularly Scarecrow Jesus, being in that particular demographic, could have may have tried to um, inspire unity when it comes mm. to? Um, uh, that's funny. Um, you know what? I, I'm anyone who knows me. I'm very much a, a free spirit hippie type of fellow, and so I'm all about unity. However, with that one, I've learned somewhere along the line that. Um, that part of music is 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 inhabiting a, a role, and I think the role for this one is it's not artificial, but it's a uh, it's to be a uh, unrelenting cultural critic. Um, and so, is it to bring unity? Um, yeah, it's to bring unity um, amongst those who uh, to those who might be misled by um, by the charade, by the matrix, if you will. Right, and it's it's that's all you know. We've we've heard it all. Yeah, but. Um, do you do you uh, create music depending on like certain cre- uh, certain current events going on right now in yes, the political absolutely. sphere? Absolutely, absolutely. Do you pour, do you perform them as such in front of audience? Absolutely. And so uh, with with visuals and and the music, um, that project, the videos are highly um, they are part and parcel to what we're doing, and so um, yeah. Now the other bands, again, they're they're not. They're more they're more. Uh, bring people together, celebration, um, that's how I characterize them. Um, Sugar Moon Rabbits, the original band, and we've been together about 10 years. And that's just a good, straightforward rock and roll band that, uh, you know, we like to make people happy and create a, make a celebration out of every single show. Um, we've had the biggest luck with that one, so the last few years we've been named one of the uh, top three bands in Indianapolis, rock bands. I don't know if I mentioned, but we last year we were the second place but we lost to a cover band, so so by that logic, we say that we were the most popular uh, the original rock band. <laughs> right. So right. so you perform your own music, yeah, but all, all of these other bands are putting out cover. Music. Not all of them, but the one that happened to win, and that's great. I mean, that's fantastic. But we're just not interested in that. That's where the money is, mm-hmm. actually, in terms of how um, other people, other musicians, um, there's definitely is more money in being a cover band for sure, and that's a wonderful art. It's just not what we're drawn to. Do you think it's uh, do you think it'd be a little bit more difficult to um, promote one's own music at, out, you know, the ones that you write and create versus cover art? Yeah, uh, it's it's easier to get gigs as a cover band, um, and that pay much better, right? So as an independent artist or original artist, you know, honestly, some some shows you make uh, very little money, but you're not doing it 
for the money, you're doing it for the love. And then if you get a, reach a certain point, I mean, then that's where it becomes very interesting. So we've, you know, we, we play the Vogue and we play uh, Hi-Fi and Radio Radio and places like that. So, you know, that we're thankful for that, but but we're not doing it for the money so much as uh, uh, just because we feel like we have to, to be honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you do have an outreach. I mean, you were yeah. uh, voted for Nouveau's top three bands, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, yeah, we're, we're certainly visible, and we really enjoy it. We also enjoy, um, going back to the politics thing, we put a, together a lot of shows. We've done things working for um, the uh, working for Lambda Legal benefit shows for that, so uh, for LGBT, um, working with the ACLU and, and legal defense for that, uh, pushing for gay marriage. Um, every year we do a domestic violence benefit called Night of the Comet, um, which has grown all three years. We just had a third where we have... Uh, the biggest year we had about 40 artists who all took over Fountain Square for a day, so it's sort of like a small tonic ball, but we're going to continue that uh, moving forward, which is great. All the money goes to the Julian Center or the Coburn Place or the Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence, just things like that. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing for the bands uh, and the musicians, um, but really, uh, just because it's visibility, but really it's saying, you know, what good can we do? Um, so that's what we try to do. In certain areas, certain types of music... Um, in the city probably are more drawn to that, but uh, we have a very supportive group here in Indianapolis, whether it's Fountain Square or the North Side of the Melody Inn or the Vogue crew. Um, you know, if there's a call out there for something important, you know, people will come together. One of the biggest things we did last year was the Ben Flint Foundation as well, or Ben Flint show where uh, it was started by a band called Viseria, and they had called out some of their people, and uh, next thing you knew, we had, uh, you know, I think it was five semis of water being sent up there and about uh, $20,000 in cash that we had raised. And the mayor was there to be supportive. Uh, so we were just trying to help out our neighbors to the north, and you know, there's no downside to that. So let's talk a little bit about um, your second band, Warflies Funk. How, how do you, you know, pronounce I think that? It, I think it is pronounced Warflies. It's an area near Broderpool. Um, we, we call it Warfleas. Papa Warfleas Funk Revival. And that's a, that's a really a fun project, actually. We uh, got together uh, for something actually, uh, interestingly, it's called the Random Band Challenge that was put together by um, uh, Mike Angel and uh, Square Cat Records, um, where they simply put out a call for musicians to get together for one night to be put with random musicians. Some of the bands didn't have much luck. They didn't work out. Um, and we got just stacked. Uh, and so I was with a, a gentleman from Cyrus Youngman and the Kingfishers, uh, Megan Hopkins and Dave Vogt, uh, who are very talented. Um, uh, a guy from Aaron McDonald from Gypsy Moonshine, uh, Jumbo from No Pit Cherries, and uh, I'm sure I'm missing someone. We've added a couple people since then. Mackenzie Barclay, who's a student here at IEPY, uh, and, she, and she's a great talent, and also a gentleman from um, Coup d'etat named Dave Stefanik. Stephanic, rather, um, and that's a that, that's just a that's, that's that's an organic. What we love about that is that we've got we've got about 20, 30 songs, um, but when we do play, we end up playing about five of them, and the rest is sort of improv. And so it's it's a uh, it's we just absolutely love it. It's so freeing for all of us. Um, also, we have a few a few singers, so it's so liberating to just you know you chime in when you feel it, and then you know you bring someone else in, um, and it's just a wonderful carnivalesque like organic experience that is a joy for all of us to play with right so it's hard to get a band with six different band schedules together to play frequently so um we do it you know probably about five six times a year um but when we do it it's an incredible celebration so we just did play at the vogue and uh that was that was fantastic brought along some of our best friends with us um and some people we didn't know as well to play with us but uh um and then I think we're going to play a big Thanksgiving show at the Melody Inn and also probably the Tonic Ball, which is a fundraiser for Second Helpings here in the city. So you're in two bands with Experimental Band right behind you. How in the world do you manage your time being a musician and a teacher? You know what? I've got a very patient wife. Um, <laughs> but, but, but to be honest, it, it, it's not that bad. We just plan to, we practice about once a week for each project. Uh, so that's twice a week. Uh, shows, I try not to, back in the day we used to play a lot more, but now, you know, I try to do uh, maybe about two shows a month, I think that's enough, and with the three different projects, it works out well. Um, but yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta organize. Uh, I, I do my grading in the morning before, before our little baby wakes up, and that's probably the biggest time commitment right now, we've got a 14-month-old, 
so that adds to the juggling. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. He's a handsome little lad. He's tried on his... Uh, his winter outfit today. I got a mm. picture. Got a picture from it's my too hot for that. I right know. Now. I know. But in the air conditioning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 how we do it. We, uh, just it's you know, and, and and that's it's one of the things we most enjoy doing. I think any musician will say that too. I mean, you, you do it because you love it, and, and it's a, just a wonderful, um, a wonderful outlet for you. I think you, you know when you don't do it, you feel uh, you feel sort of empty inside. So. Um, so yeah, that's 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 what I would say. You fi- you find a way to make time because it is one of the most important things. Not as important as marriage, nor fatherhood, um, but nor nor teaching. But it's it's up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd say it's one of my four passions. So, um, do you, uh, if if uh, if other students would discover your music and your work, and they ask you, Mr. Potts, you know, I, I saw you performing this and this, and you you even ha- uh, sent me a few YouTube videos about. Um, your old's work, would you, um, I guess, um, encourage students to listen to your work? Mm. Or do you try and keep it on the separate? Keep it separate? Yeah. Um, I don't advertise it. I don't advertise it. Uh, but um, if they find it and they're interested, then yeah, absolutely. Um, and if they, yeah, they're all, they're all uh, good representations too. I mean, we're, we're sending out positive messages, I think, even the experimental one. Um, so if they want to come to a show, you know, I'll certainly let them know when one's coming out. But I don't advertise it in class because mm-hmm. you've got different have different uh, audiences. Right. Yeah. With with my, and my job is to teach. Well, yes, and with the um with um your with your I think I think from all three bands I think there's one um particular uh message that I it, that I would come across as you know comparison to all three which would be unity, just or having fun and being oneself. At the same time, um, you, I, I think uh, you may have you may deal with a different set of audiences. Yeah. One with the with the political. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I appreciate that actually. I, I, it's nice to have someone do a reading of what, what we stand for, and I, I think that unity would be a, a good thing. Unity and love, and uh, and exposing hypocrisy for the the other, mm-hmm. the other band. That's, that's that's one more I can't think of. It's, it's it was just it's so many words to describe that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But um. How do you get your music across out? Do you have social media it. platforms? Yeah. You know, you get, you get do the uh, Bandcamp, Spotify, uh, things like that. Um. How do you get it? It's, it? We found that it's actually good to. Uh, we used to sell CDs, of course, like every other band. Um. It's funny though. We had a lot of supporters uh, say, you know, we love the stuff, but I don't have anything that plays a CD anymore in my life, except for maybe the car. So you just have to learn to adapt. Um, we like to give out music for free, um, free downloads, and then that, that encourages, changes the game so that people will be more anxious to come to the shows. Uh, we like to do uh, live feeds on um, you know, Facebook Live sometimes. Those can be very good, so if someone can't come to the show, they can see what it's like and then, uh, and then uh, say, wow, I want to be there next time. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's, um, do you have... Um, Obviously, uh, yeah, sales, iTunes, things right. like that. Yeah, yeah. But... But mostly, it's, uh, yeah, you just get, I'd say we're more show-driven, more ticket sales mm-hmm. driven um, And, yeah, we might make a million dollars, but even if we don't, it's, it's, that's the joy in it, mm-hmm. is to get people together and to forget about life for a little bit and to, um, and I also, uh, we don't, for all three of the bands, uh, we've had people say, it, uh, we try not to play the same show or the same song the same way twice. Um, I think it always, should always be different. You should always challenge yourself. I mean, that's... That's part of the fun as a musician, and um, you know it's not how some people want it. They want it to be exactly like it is on the CD and when they hear it. But I like it when it's when it's different when you put personality on it every single time. So, do you have any um, upcoming events that you like to share? If um... uh, yeah, da, 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 da. let me think. Um, actually, yeah, we've got a couple of benefit shows coming up on October twenty first. We'll be doing something for Volunteers of America at Radio Radio in Fountain Square. I think that's our next. One, then we've got a giant Thanksgiving show um, at the Melody Inn, and then also Tonic Ball on that same night, which is, I believe, is November seventeenth, uh, and so that'll be in Fountain Square. Um, yeah, those are the three biggest ones coming up, and we'd love to have you be a part. It's a it's a, it's a joy, um, and I'm really pleased and happy that you and Campus Citizen are doing this as well because. 
Um, I've got some students as well at IUPUI who, I, since I have a background in radio, I'm trying to help them reestablish a, a vibrant uh, radio presence here in the city because that's one thing the city needs. Um, it's hard to get your music out there for local musicians, <clears throat> even if you're extremely good, unless you have some radio backing. Uh, and so, you know, Alt 103 does a little bit, um, but that's the key. I mean, if you look at, compare Indianapolis to some other uh, cities like Lexington or um, uh, they all have vibrant um, college radio stations, and so that's what we like to see here, yeah. Okay. So um, is there any advice that you'd like to give for aspiring uh, self-made artists, um, such as besides time management yeah. and besides um, just um, being oneself and being creative, yeah. um, is there any advice you'd like to give out to them? Yeah, you know, uh, we've got an alum. I'd say uh, push your limits, step out of your comfort zone. Um, and don't be afraid to do something organic, to uh, put yourself in an environment with other people, other creative people. Because um, there's a lot of good rappers out there, and there's a lot of good guitar players out there, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but I think really when you meet some other people who, uh, we've got some friends in a place called Listen Here in Fountain Square, in Garfield Park area, um, Oreo Jones, who's a former student of mine. Um, he runs this thing, and once a month they actually they bring people together, different musical sounds, and they draw them out of the hat, and they have three people create something there together in a, in a period of a half hour, and then they record it and they put it on the radio. And you never know, you never know when something like that is going to really stick. And I think uh, that's what I would say: get outside of your comfort zone, um, use any opportunity you can to hone your craft, of course, and make connections every step of the way. Um, and support other people. Mm -hmm. I would say that's absolutely key. Because right? there's a lot of good musical styles out there. And uh, one last thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes music gets segmented in any area as well. And they've got your different scenes. Um, you know, really break down those walls. Um, I think that's important. And, <laughs> and stand for something. Mm -hmm. Most importantly. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice word spoken. Well, thank you, sir. Um, I think this about wraps up for this episode. Mr. Potts, thank you for coming on to the show. I Mr. really appreciate Rowan. it. Mr. Rowan. Yes, sir. Rowan. Yes, sir. Awesome. I know. It, it's, it's complicated. That's great. But uh, thank you all for tuning in on this episode. Signing out.